Hello, uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for joining. My name is uh, Dekel Tankel and I run uh, product marketing for Cloud Foundry at VMware. And in to today's session, we're going to cover an introduction to Cloud Foundry, including uh, why why do we need platform as a service and the need for a new platform? We'll go over the services, frameworks, and clouds that are available in Cloud Foundry. And we'll do uh, a live demo, in this, uh, which will be the majority of the webinar today, because uh, we want to show you things in action. And this live demo will run both on cloudfoundry.com, the public cloud service operated by VMware, as well as Micro Cloud Foundry, which is uh, an instance of Cloud Foundry, a complete instance of Cloud Foundry running on a developer's laptop. We'll then go to uh, some recap slides and leave time for questions. So what's new for applications? Before, what, what's in the landscape? What is exciting and new for applications today? So. First and foremost, new frameworks and languages, uh, where the majority or the, the primary reason is to increase developer productivity and reduce time to market. So you get frameworks like Spring, Node.js, Ruby on Rails and Sinatra, Scala, Python, and many more. So you have a lot of frameworks available for developers to build more rich applications and get them faster to market. The second uh, item is new devices and domains. So you are no longer developing to a single uh, PC uh, or a server. You're actually building your app that can run on multiple devices on, on multiple platforms, if it's social, mobile, uh, software as a service, and so on. Next, you have data. So um, as most of you all probably know, you know, data is growing um, extensively, and you get NoSQL solutions uh, like Hadoop and MongoDB, and you need to be able to program to those data solutions. You need to be able to maintain them. You need to be able to scale your application and be elastic, and you also need to be able to access data in real time that can be structured and unstructured. And finally, the whole, this whole thing can run basically everywhere. It can run on a virtualized environment in your own data center. It can run on a physical hardware. It can run on a cloud somewhere. It can run as an infrastructure as a service or on top of a platform as a service. So you're getting a lot of um, new things when you're actually building an application today. So not surprisingly, um, if you have a lot of choices, uh, there is also a lot of complexity in today's uh, where developers and operations are actually trying to build applications, maintain them, and deploy them. So um, typical app may look like this picture here, and I spent many years in running R&D teams uh, building apps like this. Uh, with multiple app servers, load balancers, databases, messaging systems, the need to cache and kind of do offline uh, jobs using workers. And as many of you know, this is pretty complex. And if I'm a developer that just want to write my business logic and you know have fun and write code, I don't want to deal with all of that. I basically don't want to wire all these middleware components. So, you know, what do I mean by complex? You get multiple nodes and multiple roles within a node. You, get, you need to, complex, to connect between those nodes in a pretty complex manner. You get deployment challenges. So if you, how do I uh, build a VM? How do I manage the network? How do I make it accessible over the internet? So load balancers and what happens when I scale the app? Uh, I need to reconfigure my load balancer and so on and so on. What happens when I'm doing updates, rollback? What happens when I'm changing environments between development, QA, staging, production? And on top of all of that, uh, you get the management challenge when you have to keep it running 24-7 and you have to keep it running correctly and know what's running in, in which place. Now, what do developers want? What do operations want? They want they basically want to do VMC instances, and you'll see that in the demo. They want to have one command line or one API call that basically abstracts all of that complexity that you have in the picture above into a few simple API calls. Or in other words, they want friction-free application deployment. They want 
self-service end-to-end, so deploy, manage, update, scale, all being done with a few API calls, um, your code, the code of your actual app is not affected by where it's deployed, how it's scaled, and which component it's, it needs. So everything is provided as a service. We'll talk more on that in a few slides. Um, the system, the PaaS engine, basically automatically creates and maintains all the connections between the middleware components. So in the example, you, in the first example, you'll see in the demo, when I'm scaling a simple app, I'm not going and configuring the load balancer. And I'm not going and telling the uh, application server or the web server that there is an additional instance. This is not a part of my business logic. Finally, you, you want services to be easily consumed. So in the second demo, you will see an example of a database service and how easy it is to consume it within an app without configuring it, installing it, or maintaining it. Bottom line, developers want maximum productivity and operations wants to have to manage all of that very uh, elastically and efficiently. So if you look at PaaS or platform as a service, um, from what we've seen before, there is a need for a new platform. So the current way you, you do middleware is not optimized for this cloud environment and multi-framework and multi-languages and multi-services. So you need a new platform, and this new platform needs to be integrated software stack. So as we've seen, instead of this complex picture of a lot of connections and wiring, you have an integrated stack. You need to have an application execution engine. So basically, you as a developer are just pushing your code. You write your code, and you're pushing it into this environment, into this PaaS environment, and the PaaS executing the code for you. It needs to be self-service. So once you deploy, you're using a few simple API call, and it all happens under the cover within the PaaS. It needs to be automated in terms of infrastructure provisioning. So I'm sure many of you work on enterprises, and you know how long it takes to get a VM up and running in-house. Uh, if I just want to do a simple um, development or a simple test or a simple prototype. Um, so all of that has to be automated, and you need the ability to basically do it locally and then deploy it to a cloud environment. Curated, updated, and operated as a service basically means that from the IT perspective, from where you are, from whom you are consuming the path, it needs to be as if it's running in, a, in any public cloud environment or on your own laptop. It should be exactly the same. And the way I'd like to look at it is like kind of a contract between development and operation that basically developers can focus on their code, operations can focus on uh, optimizing the way they manage the apps, and it can run, and it doesn't matter where it runs. And that's a key principle for Cloud Foundry that you'll see more and more during this presentation, what we call the multi-cloud. So it can run on, on your private cloud, on your laptop, on your choice of public clouds, on, the, uh, on an open source version that you build yourself. It doesn't matter. And we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. So you may ask, uh, why do we need another PaaS? There are a lot of PaaS solutions out there already. But the reality is that existing PaaS solutions today in the marketplace are incomplete or basically introduce significant adoption barriers. And as you can, we call it the incomplete PaaS. And depends on your geography, you can relate to the um, football or soccer picture here. Um, but what do we mean by incomplete paths? So first and foremost, today when you choose your paths, you choose your cloud. We think that's a mistake. When you choose, the, the, the choice of running a path needs to be decoupled from which cloud it's running on. So when you choose the paths you want to deploy your application on, it can run on any cloud. It can run on your laptop for development, it can run on your private infrastructure, on your choice of infrastructure, and it can run on a choice of public clouds. So you don't choose your cloud when you choose your path. Similarly, you don't choose your provider when you choose your path. So when you select your, your path, you don't choose the provider that's actually going to provide you with the service. So you, choose, you are choos choosing a technology that can be provided using multiple providers. You have to have an on-prem solution. So you need 
fundamental part of building an application for cloud era is to be able to build them locally and deploy them locally on your own infrastructure and not only on a public cloud. You need to be able to use multiple frameworks. Um, so we'll see what frameworks are supported in Cloud Foundry today. And when you're using those frameworks, you, you want to use them the same way that you are used to develop. And we'll see that very clearly when we'll run the Spring demo on STS, on the Spring Source Tool Suite, which basically means for Cloud Foundry, there is a fundamental principle that we do not change the way developers build their applications. Developers can write the same code, in this example, the same Spring code in STS, regardless if they are deploying it on a PaaS or to a local server. It doesn't matter, the development should be the same. So, not surprisingly, Cloud Foundry is basically um, addressing all the issues that we described in the previous slides. And first and foremost, it's all about choice. Choice of cloud for deployment, that is, that's why we call it the open path. Choice of clouds for deployment, choice of industry standards frameworks, choice of application services, we'll see all that in a minute, and extensible architecture to digest future cloud innovation. What this means, it's very important, is Cloud Foundry is not only built for like supporting the popular frameworks of today. It's also very easy to add new frameworks, so you as a, as a consumer of Cloud Foundry are kind of bulletproof yourself for future cloud innovation that will come um, in weeks, months, years, to, years ahead for Cloud Foundry. Just as a small anecdote example, um, Cloud Foundry was launched back in April this year, and less than a week after launch, we already had a contribution from the open source community for a new framework. So it's really easy to digest uh, future cloud innovation. Part of the, this um, uh, choice is that Cloud Foundry is completely open source under the Apache 2 license and available on GitHub. So what do you have in Cloud Foundry, what, are, what, are, what is included today. So you have your choice of frameworks. Uh, currently we have Spring for Java first and foremost, Grails, Scala on Lyft, Ruby on Rails and Ruby on Sinatra, and Node.js. So a, a, a large scale of frameworks that you can choose based on your development of choice. You also have an application service interface that basically allows you to plug in new services, and we support uh, some of those services uh, on cloudfoundry.com and on microcloud. We'll talk about this in the demo. So currently you have uh, vFabric Postgres, uh, the database. You have MySQL database, vFabric RabbitMQ for messaging, Redis for key value store, and MongoDB for unstructured document data um, for big data solutions. And last but certainly not least, the way how you deploy it. So the multi-cloud thing that you will see all across the demo is extremely important in Cloud Foundry. As we've said, when you choose your path, you don't, choose your, you don't have to choose your cloud. So micro cloud, run it on your laptop for development. You will see this as part of the demo. Cloudfoundry.com, this is VMware own and operated instance of Cloud Foundry running in the public cloud environment and the choice of partners that deploy, pub, that deploy Cloud Foundry today. And in the future, you will have a private version or basically a version of Cloud Foundry that you can run on your own infrastructure. Recap on like where we are in terms of adoption. So this, this has been quite a journey. We have thousands of beta users, tens of thousands of beta users already on cloudfoundry.com and we are doubling the number of users every two months. We have thousands of applications deployed and we are tripling those numbers of applications. Um, we have multiple distributors and deployers. So you don't have to, I mean, cloudfoundry.com is one of the places where you can use Cloud Foundry, but you can go to other distributors like Canonical, Dell, and Stratus, Opscodes, RightScale, and more to come to basically what we call VMC everywhere. You will learn what VMC is in two slides to basically run Cloud Foundry uh, on multiple choices. Community leads, very important. So the frameworks that you've seen um, are the ones that are uh, provided by VMware, but we are, as Cloud Foundry is open source, we are looking for more and more partners to provide additional frameworks and, and solutions on Cloud Foundry. We call it the Community Leads Program, and we already have two charter members 
PHP, uh, sorry, AppFog that provides PHP, and ActiveState that provides Python. If you want to join uh, this program, go to cloudfoundry.com. You'll get a link to how you to the program and how you can join. Strong open source community participation. Hundreds of contributions already, and multiple frameworks and uh, solutions added by uh, the open source community. So in the demo, we're going to uh, touch on two of those services, cloudfoundry.com, which is basically the multi-tenant pass service for grassroots developers. It's operated by VMware. It provides multiple deployment frameworks, Spring, Ruby, we both, we'll see both of them in the demo, Node.js, we also see that in the demo, Scala and Grails. We'll have multiple application servers, services. We'll see uh, MySQL, vFabric, Postgres, and Redis during the demo. And we have two main developer tools. We'll see both of them in the demo, the VMC command line interface and the STS, which is the Eclipse-based IDE for Spring developers. MicroCloud uh, released a few, a few weeks ago. Um, it's the industry-first downloadable path. So you have this nice kind of this con key image here, um, which basically, like, like, like the slogan says, we shrunk the cloud. So it's an instance of Cloud Foundry that runs on a developer PC or Mac, and it's running on a virtual machine image using Fusion for Mac, uh, Player or Workstation for Windows and Linux. And right now in this, I have my, my Mac here, and I have a microcloud running, and I will use that in the demo. Probably the most important thing about microcloud is that it, allows, it has symmetry with other Cloud Foundry instances. So the, same, the scenario I'm going to show is basically develop locally and deploy to the cloud. And it, it con contains a dynamic DNS support, which basically allows you to, as a developer, you want to move between your office, home, or a coffee shop in the mission, um, and you can do that. CloudFoundry.org. Um, it's open source, go to cloudfoundry.org and the, all, the entire source code is available on GitHub under the Apache 2 license. So with that, we'll switch to the demo and then we'll get back for a few more slides. Um, so from now on, everything is live on .com and microcloud. So, you know, if things happen, it's live and uh, that's part of the fun. Um, so what, what we're going to see. The, dem the demo that I'm going to share with you has basically three parts. In the first part, we're going to show how we build a very simple Hello World, Ruby Hello World app on cloudfoundry.com on the public service. Um, and we're going to scale it up and down. So we'll see that there is no need to wire middleware. Then we're going to see uh, a more complex app using Java and Spring and, data and also a database. So we're basically going to see an online bookstore where we um, connect first, develop it on micro Cloud Foundry, and then scale it uh, on cloudfoundry.com without changing my, your app. And last, we're going to have a, a small fun with a Node.js chat application where we we'll start by experiment locally on my micro Cloud and then publish to cloudfoundry.com, and you guys can actually participate in the chat because it's all a public URL. So uh, let's get going. First thing I'll do is I'll share my desktop. So this is uh, cloudfoundry.com, the main website for Cloud Foundry. And the first thing you need to do if you haven't done it already is go and sign up. It's currently beta, so signing up is for free. You put your email here. In this case, we're gonna use that email address during the demo. And obviously I already signed up. You accept the term of service, click register, uh, request an invite. It usually takes between 20, 24 to 48 hours until we approve your request, and then you get an email with your credentials. Once you got the email, you basically, the first thing you'll do is install the command line tool, the Ruby client. Very simple, just clicking gem install VMC. All, all of that, by the way, is described in many details in our blog and our support site, and you'll see the links at the end. But basically, you install your VMC client, and you are set. Next, you need to target your cloud. So VMC target, a very important command. We will see that a few times during the demo. That basically tells 
the VMC client to which cloud to point to. So it can point to cloudfoundry.com or microcloud or any Cloud Foundry based solution that is out there. So in, in our case, we'll target cloudfoundry.com, the public service. So we're doing the API endpoint. Now we are targeted there, and probably the first thing you want to do is change your password because you get a temporary password in your email. And I'm fine with my password, so I will not do that. I would log in. And I'll use the, the email we are using during the demo. And we're in, and if I'm doing the VMC info command, uh, you can see that I'm targeted to cloudfoundry.com, api.cloudfoundry.com, and I have my standard capacity on the beta service with 2 gigs of memory, ability to deploy 16 services total, and 120 apps. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push a very simple Ruby app. So this is nothing more than a, a, a nice piece of Ruby code on Sinatra that prints my host and port. Very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the VMC push command. Again, a very important command that basically that's the practic practice behind the vision of developers just push your apps. That's why we call it push. Um, I want to deploy from the coin directory. The answer is yes. I, I'll call it my foo. This is the public URL that, I'm going, that this app is going to be hosted on. It detects that this is a Sinatra application, a Ruby Sinatra. Remember that line because in, in the third part of the demo, we are going to deploy a node application, and we'll see that this detects that this is a node application. So that's correct. Memory reservation is fine. At this point, we will not bind any services. In the second part of the demo, we are going to bind services using STS, the database services. And in the, first part, the third part, we are going to bind services from the VMC command line. So at this point, we're just saying no. And staging, so the application is being staged by the PaaS engine and started. So now if we go to a browser and do my foo, hello from the cloud. So very simple. I, I just took a Ruby code and I pushed it to the PaaS environment. I didn't set up app server, web server, load balancer, anything, just push. Okay, so that's simple, nice, great. Let's scale it. Let's say that instead of one instance, I want, I want to add 10 more instances to the application. So all I need to do is move my event controls here. VMC ins instances, the name of my app, and let's say plus 10. So what happens now in the background is basically the Cloud Foundry engine is launching 10 more instances of this simple Foo app. So I have a total of 11. And it's not only launching them, it's also load balancing between them. So if I'll go back to my, to my browser here and I'll hit click refresh, you see that the port and IP are changing. So we, we actually scaled without wiring any middleware. We didn't configure the load balancer. We didn't do anything with, with routing. We didn't, uh, basically, the Cloud Foundry engine did all that for us, including updating the DNS and, and telling that there is new port and IP is now running. And the same thing I can obviously do by scaling down. And also note how this is a very simple app, but even for this simple app, see how quickly it does. In our um, launch demo, we actually scaled, uh, I believe, to uh, 200 instances in in in, in few minutes, in, in few seconds. Sorry. So it's 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 really really fast, and it's designed to be scalable and designed to be scalable fast without you as a user, as a developer, or as an operation operator needs to wire any middleware components. So. That's great, very simple example. Let's move on. Let's try a more uh, interesting app. So we'll switch now to um, uh, SDS, which is the Spring Source um, Developer tool, tool Suite based on Eclipse. And if you're a Spring developer, you'll probably know this tool better than I do. Um, and what we have here is um, 
uh, a, a, a books app, or basically book on, online booking store that was built using Spring Rule. Um, so we had a bunch of uh, fields here and an MVC app that you know should be very familiar for any Spring developer, including uh, web app libraries, Maven dependencies, and uh, Java resources. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy it locally on my micro cloud. So for that, I first need to have a micro cloud. So again, all of that is being explained very clearly in our blog posts. But if I go here to cloudfoundry.com and I basically click download my micro cloud, that's after you have your um, credentials, you log in with the same credentials as you have for, my, for cloudfoundry.com and then I already download my micro cloud, so you first will need to download the version and generate the token. The token is the one thing that allows you to connect to the micro cloud in the VM, and that's what we will use in our URLs when we'll show the app. So in this case, my token is called mylocaldev.cloudfoundry.me. So basically, any application that I will deploy on my micro cloud will see will look like my app dot mylocaldev.cloudfoundry.me. And obviously, you can use whatever name you want here as long as it's available. Um, so the next step is to run VMware Fusion in my case, because it's a Mac, and uh, install the micro cloud. Um, this is a pretty simple step. Uh, you can um, follow the simple instructions. You need, to you need to enter your token, set up some users, configure the DNS, which is done mostly automatically, and you're done. You're getting to this point. So at this point, you have your micro cloud ready. Uh, as you can see here, I have under admin, um, that's the main user that I'm using, and my identity is the token that I've used, mylocaldev.cloudfoundry.me. And just to make sure we are all okay in terms of services, I'm clicking seven here, and you can see that I have a MySQL service running, uh, which is the one we're going to use in this demo, and I have a Redis node and gateway running, which is the service we're going to use in the, second, the third part of the demo. So let's go back to our STS. And basically, what we need to do is we need to set up a connection to this micro cloud. So we're creating a new server in STS. This is under the VMware Cloud Foundry plugin. We're going to call it micro cloud foundry. We're going to use the credentials that we set up for cloud foundry for micro cloud. And as you can see here, and we're going to choose a micro cloud. So there is a choice of clouds here. As you can see, this already config the first time you'll do it, it will ask for your configuration uh, for your domain. I already entered my local dev. So let's see if our account is validated and click finish. So basically what we have here is an endpoint that is connected to our micro cloud from STS. Everything you're going to see now is running locally on my Mac. So everything is within STS connecting to this nice little VM that I have here. So the next step is I'm going to deploy my books app. So I'm going to call it books. And you can see that in STS you have two choices of frameworks, Spring and Lyft. We're going to use Spring for now. We got, this is the URL that this app is actually going to live in on my local micro cloud. I'm not going to start it. You'll see in a minute why. I'm going to click Finish. So now I have this app waiting in my micro cloud uh, to be deployed. Now, what is an online booking store without a place to store your books? So for that, we need a database. Now, see how simple it is to actually add a database. <clears throat> in this case, I'm going to call it my local DB, and I'm going to uh, use a MySQL database service. Again, everything is running in my micro cloud here. And I'm going to drag and drop it under application services. Now, what's actually happening right now is the Cloud Foundry system is provisioning the MySQL uh, database. It's actually creating the tables for you because this is a Spring Roo app and you have uh, defined all the entries in the app for what you need from a, from a database table. And it also provisions and create the connection to that database. So when, when I click Start, um, it's going to start running everything in my micro cloud here. So
now it started and synchronized. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open it locally here in my STS environment. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm currently developing locally. I want to have everything done in my STS. So there is a built-in browser within STS, and I'm going to open the app here. So as you can see, I have a, a full-blown app uh, running with, um, within STS, connected to a database. Everything happened within this single VM. You know, I didn't. There is no MySQL secret installation running here on my Mac, and no secret web servers installed. Everything is within the Cloud Foundry microcloud environment. And to see that we actually have a database um, connected to that, I'm going to create a new book, and I'm going to call it Proof, and that's me, and it was published today, and it is available in stock. Good for us. And we're going to list books. And we're going to see that book. So now, great, we have everything running on our micro cloud, and we are ready to go live. And we've shown this to our boss, and everybody's happy. And yay, we got a great app. And now let's see what we can do with it on a public cloud environment. So do I need to go now and spend months in re-architecting my application to actually fit a public cloud environment? Well, the answer is no. All I need to do right now is basically deploy it as is to cloudfoundry.com. So from this moment, we are going to a public cloud environment, in this case, cloudfoundry.com, the operated service by VMware. And we are going to use the same user. You've seen me deploy the Foo app before. We're going to validate the account, click Finish. And you see now I have another entry here. This was my micro cloud. This is my public cloud environment. And if I open it, you see our small little Foo app that we deployed before, here it is. And now I'm going to take the exact same book app and drag and drop it to my cloud foundry, public Cloud Foundry environment. I'm still going to call it Books. Um, I'm not going to deploy it, and I'm clicking Finish. So notice that I didn't do any code changes in my app when I moved between my local development environment to my public cloud environment. And now, again, we need a database. This time we're going to use a different kind of database. We're going to call it ProDB, and we're going to use Postgres, vFabric Postgres database on my public cloud. And we're going to drag and drop it the same way. So we're actually using a different kind of database now uh, when we're moving to the public environment, and we still didn't have to change anything in our app. Um, and not only that, we're going to deploy it with three instances this time, and not one because this is a production app, we have more users, we need more capacity, we're going to use three instances and click Start here. And, the, and what ha what's going to happen is that we're actually going to load balance between those instances and use a production uh, database um, Postgres and not MySQL that we used in our local deployment. And this time we're actually going to uh, go to our um, public environment here. We're going to click to go to books. And as you can see now, we now have the app books.cloudfoundry.com running on a public URL. So if you guys are very fast, you already added a book. In the previous webinar, someone added a book before me. But let's do now, um, so my public book. And that's you. And available in stock and we can add one more book just to illustrate that this is a we have more room more instances it's all running on a public environment and we can list all books and we can create libraries and so on so to recap we deployed back to STS so we basically deployed an app locally on, on the micro cloud, and then we scaled it uh, to cloudfoundry.com using different kind of database, more instances, without doing any code changes. The last thing we're going to do in terms of the demo is we're going to go back to our um, command line, and now we are going to deploy uh, a Node.js app using, uh, using Redis service. So 
two very new frameworks. We talked about um, adopting your environment to future innovation. So let's say your developers are now excited and they want to use Node and want to start experimenting with that. And they're going to start, again, we, we'll start on, my, on our micro cloud locally in, the, um, in our laptops, and then we're going to scale or go public with cloudfoundry.com. So the first thing is, let's actually go to the, to the app. So this is, um, uh, this is a small customization on the open source example of NodeChat. It's a Node.js app. And the first thing we'll do is we'll run it on a micro cloud. So in order to do that, we want to target ourselves back, back to the micro cloud. So behind the scene, this is what happened when we created a server in STS. It, does, it did the, v, the equivalent of a VMC target. And now we're going to go to my local dev dot cloudfoundry.me. And we are going to do VMC push. Sorry. So this time we're going to deploy from the current directory. We're going to call it my chat or CF chat. This is going to be the URL. So for those of you who will, who will try to participate in this local chat, it's still local. It's running on my micro cloud. It will be public in a minute. Don't worry. You remember that before that it detected a Ruby application. Now this is a node.js application, and that's correct. We're going to use the default memory. And yes, we're going to bind services. Last time we said no, and then we've shown services on STS. Now we're going to show services on VMC on the command line. We don't want to use any existing service. We want to do a new one. And this new one is a Redis. So I'm selecting three, Redis key value store. Name is fine. It's creating the service, uploading the application, staging it, and starting it. And now if we go back to our browser and do open another tab and do cf underscore chat dot cloud foundry dot sorry cf underscore chat my local dev dot cloud foundry dot me and now we have a and that's only decal this is a nice little chat app and that's only me it will be public in a minute so let's say now that I'm happy with my app and I'm going back to VMC and now the next logical step is let's move it to a public cloud environment and deploy it. So in order to do that and publish it. In order to do that, what we first need to do is our favorite target command. So we're doing VMC target, and this time we're going back to the cloudfoundry.com. So you see how am I juggling like between clouds? That's, that's the promise of a multi-cloud. You don't really care where your app, where your, uh, you don't choose your cloud when you choose your path. You develop locally, in this case, micro cloud or uh, any private cloud deployment or another public cloud running Cloud Foundry. It doesn't matter. It's VMC everywhere. You target to multi-cloud, and when you choose your path, you don't choose your cloud. api.cloudfoundry.com. So now we're targeting. Let's just see that um, we are good. And we can do, if you're not sure, you can always do VMC info and, you know, look where you are. So this time our target is api.cloudfoundry.com. And we all, we're already using one service, which is the database service Postgres for the books. And we have two apps, which is Foo and um, our bookstore. And we are utilizing 1.6 gigs out of our 2 gig quota. Um, and let's do push. So the same thing now on cloudfoundry.com. Sorry. And we'll do deploy from the current directory. Yes, we're going to call it CF chat again. Now, this time, this URL is going to be on cloudfoundry.com. So you'll be, if you're fast, you'll be able to join the chat and write something. This is a Node.js application. That's correct. Default memory reservation. You can always go through that deployment without all the questions with, the, uh, with one of the tags. So go to vmc-help, 
and you can see how you can avoid that. Um, yes, we'd like to bind the service, and no, we don't want to use the existing one. You see this time you got more services available, and we'll do Redis. Number five, name is fine. It's creating the service, binding, uploading the application, staging, starting, and in a minute you will have a, a live chat running. So if we'll go back to our browser here and we'll call cfchat cloudfoundry.com and I'm going to join it. this oh yeah so we got a few uh, fast faster so welcome so now it's all public and um, yeah, who is I am first Ken okay Ken you get I need to think of a prize um, so I'm public so now it's all public in cloudfoundry.com so again what we've seen is uh, we've went to um, a Node.js app this time using a Redis service, so a different kind of framework, different type of services. We first deployed it on our local micro cloud and then published it on cloudfoundry.com without doing any changes. So at this point, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. Um, and We've, we've seen the Ruby app, the Spring app, and the Node.js app. Um, what I really like you to take away from is that you know this was deployed on a multi multi cloud environment, uh, locally or in public cloud, and the same thing, uh, basically you can do with um, any technology that any provider that basically runs the Cloud Foundry PaaS stack. Um, so. Key use cases that we see uh, out there. So we talked a lot about dev test and trial, and I think what this what this image is trying to show is basically you can do a lot of experiments and select the best one. So in today's world, when you want to bring uh, a lot of feature fast to market and be very innovative, you have to have the ability to do multiple tests and prototypes without uh, paying the price of you know opening tickets or waiting for a VM to be provisioned or or just do it, write your code, do the things that you are good in, deploy it, and, and, and scale. So we kind of call it write code, not tickets, but it basically means that you can focus on your code, and, and we deliver on the this promise of path, which is the abstraction and the agility, let developers be more agile. New applications. So you've seen how uh, how easy it is to kind of go and 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 use a new framework like uh, Ruby, like Node.js, and if, if you know use it, leverage this with existing tools like Sp existing frameworks like Spring and, and Spring Mobile, and ability to uh, connect to social applications. Um, SaaS extensibility. The, as you've seen, Cloud Foundry is. Uh, highly designed for web apps, so um, everything is very quickly available as a browser URL and can be offered as a SaaS application for SaaS providers. App modularization, when you are, for example, if you're um, a Spring developer that, that looking to take the, uh, your legacy app in, in Java to the next level with Spring, so we are maintaining the same developer experience and using the same tools which is very important. You don't have to adopt the way you write code when you're moving into the prize environment. So in a sense, if you like, the same way paths should be abstracted for the in, from the infrastructure that it's running on, the developers that are using paths should not be forced to learn new language or new way to develop code when they are deploying to the paths uh, versus their um, existing environment. Uh, a few key takeaways before we move to uh, Q&A. Um, so first and foremost, why do we even need a PaaS? We are now in a shift to a cloud era where there's basically a, a need for a new application platform. The existing platforms that are uh, today are basically not optimized for the, for the cloud era. Um, existing PaaS solutions in the marketplace today are incomplete and have um, uh, a few significant drawbacks, like the, uh, the ability to deploy on-prem or the multi-cloud notion or the openness of frameworks. And Cloud Foundry aims to address all that by being the first open platform as a service, provide you choice of clouds, first and foremost, multi-clouds of place to deploy, frameworks and application services. Um, what's next? So first, 
uh, go and sign up if you haven't done so already to start playing on cloudfoundry.com um, it's better service for now it's free um, f get a free account start deploying apps um, if you're interested in the source code go to cloudfoundry.org and github and you can download the source code um, um, and view everything that we've talked to it's the VMC client for example is all open source as well so you can see all, all, all that um, download your micro cloud foundry so a very um, useful tool for developers to get started locally if you do, um, so just download the VM as you've seen in the demo a um, few simple steps to configure it and you got everything on your Mac so even if you just want to use rabbit use MySQL, use MongoDB as, as a local services you get it in your VM um, and go to our blog we are uh, all the major announcements that we are doing we're adding we're constantly adding features um, so you know there is uh, every week there is something new on Cloud Foundry go and, and check it out on our blog post and with that we have uh, around 10 minutes left so let's open the floor for Q&A